This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 782, At What Age Do Most People Retire in America? And Much Poorer, But Also Much Richer Too, by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com. And I am Dan, I'm here every weekday reading to you from some of the best blogs on personal finance and actually business too. You can hear me narrate articles all about management, entrepreneurship, freelancing, productivity, creativity, marketing, social media, and a lot more on the podcast Optimal Business Daily. That is the newest show that I took on and you can find that wherever you're hearing this. But for this show, I have two posts for you today from Sam of Financial Samurai and we'll get to them in just a moment. But first, Hiring used to be hard. Multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, a confusing review process. But today, hiring can be easy with ZipRecruiter, where 80% of employers who post a job get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And now my listeners can try it for free at ziprecruiter.com slash OFD. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Now let's get right to it as we start optimizing your life. At What Age Do Most People Retire in America? by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com Given that many Americans are in a difficult financial situation with only $17,000 in retirement savings for those between the age of 56 and 61, according to the Economic Policy Institute, you'd think most Americans are never going to retire. The reality, however, is 69% of Americans are out of the full-time workforce by age 66, and roughly 51% hang up their boots between the ages of 61 and 65. That's according to LIMRA, the Life Insurance and Market Research Association. By age 75, 89% of Americans have left the labor force. It surprises me that less than 1% of Americans retire before age 50. With the way that the financial independence retire early or fire movement has taken off, as well as the rise of freelance work, you'd think the percentage would be higher. How are retirees able to survive? LIMRA estimates that the average American household has about $253,200, but most of that is owned by the wealthy. The median holding is just $17,500, which matches up well with the Economic Policy Institute's estimate of $17,000 from 2013. 75% of Americans have less than $100,000 saved. The reason why most Americans are able to retire by 66 despite so little wealth is due to social security, a traditional pension, and retirement work plans. LIMRA reports that some 41% of retirees have annual income less than $25,000. Of retirees with income over $50,000 a year, about 80% draw from a pension or retirement plan. Unfortunately, virtually nobody under 40 is going to have a traditional pension anymore. And even if there was such a thing as a pension, With a typical American changing jobs every three years, there's no way today's workers will stay long enough to ever collect. Therefore, the focus on retirement savings needs to be on maxing out a 401k, an IRA, and other pre-tax retirement plans, while also saving additional money in after-tax investment accounts. Just in case there's a job change, a need for liquidity, or the desire to retire before the 10% early withdrawal penalty goes away, having a robust after-tax investment portfolio is a wise move. For added security, it's wise to build multiple income streams to reduce concentration risk. There's not one person I know who retired before the age of 50 who doesn't have at least three income streams beyond a traditional retirement plan. Part-time work as a supplement. Despite the anemic retirement income figures, the gig economy enables millions of Americans to work part-time and supplement or replace a full-time income source. I'm pretty sure if all went to could earn at least $50,000 a year driving for Lyft, assembling furniture for TaskRabbit, and being the friendliest greeter at Walmart. But then, by working 50-plus hours a week, I wouldn't really be retired. The key to surviving retirement on a low income is owning a home debt-free and having sufficient medical coverage. With health and living expenses taken care of, surviving off just $2,000 a month while challenging is doable. If you're fortunate enough to have children who call you back, they might even come to your rescue if things get too difficult. Although I left full-time work at age 34, I've never stopped working. And I think this is true for most early retirees. Your focus simply shifts from something you're sick of doing to something that's much more interesting. If you're lucky enough to love what you do, then by all means, work until the very end. And I will have another post from Sam in just a moment. But first, thank you again to ZipRecruiter for sponsoring this episode. Hiring used to be hard. Multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, and a confusing review process. 
But today, hiring can be easy and you only have to go to one place to get it done, ziprecruiter.com OFD. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, but they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invite them to apply to your job. As applications come in, ZipRecruiter analyzes each one and spotlights the top candidates so you never miss a great match. ZipRecruiter is so effective that 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. With results like that, it's no wonder that ZipRecruiter is the highest rated hiring site in America. And right now, my listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ziprecruiter.com slash OFD. That's ziprecruiter.com slash OFD. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Much Poorer, But Also Much Richer Too by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com Over the last several days, I've spent a lot of money. First, I splurged on a 50-minute massage for $67 that came from $260 in poker winnings the other night. Does the $67 count as real money since I didn't have the money before the game? Yes, because I could have easily lost $260 as well. Saving any winnings from poker is a very empty feeling. Instead, I like to spend it on something rewarding, since the excitement of taking down a hand lasts about a nanosecond. Second, I went on a double date with a client and his wife at this new French-American restaurant and picked up the $230 bill. The place definitely wasn't cheap, what with the oysters, wine, cheese plates, bouillabaisse, and 24-layer crepes. However, it was a good time and great for relationship building. As he is officially a client, there was no hesitation to pay, unlike my outing with the real estate agent the other week. Finally, after two months of waiting and mingling, I'm now officially a member of this cozy old-school tennis club. I handed over my credit card to the member rep and watched her swipe it for a cool $10,000. Curiously, I didn't blink an eye because I was so excited to finally be a part of the family. The process overall has taken two months. There's something about going to a place where everybody knows your name. The club feels like one big family. Experiences always win. In total, I spent $10,297 in the past three days with no regrets. It's quite strange because I realize that $10,297 is a lot of money. I really do. Yet there's not one ounce of buyer's remorse because I haven't really bought any things. Instead, I spent money on experiences, which are well worth it. I'm super excited about meeting all the members of the club, especially. I've already met around 55 members through weekly Saturday morning double sessions, and there are several hundred more to go. Maybe I'll find a new best buddy. Maybe I'll discover a long-lost friend. Or maybe I'll play a plenty and get in the best shape of my life. Aren't those things priceless? To me, they are. Perfect Saturdays now include playing a couple hours of tennis starting at 9 a.m., stretching and hitting the sauna after, and then getting brunch at the dining area upstairs. At Princeton, you have what are known as eating clubs where people socialize. This place feels the same way where members just hang out after a match and catch up on life. Time and time again, I realized that spending money on experiences far surpasses spending money on things. I could have used the 10297 to buy one-fifth of a new $50,000 Audi Q5 3.0 liter SUV, but rather I'll just keep my $5,000 beater SUV, who I named Moose, for another year and hope nothing breaks. The leftover money after you've established your retirement framework is meant to be spent. I say go have fun and live a little. You just listened to the posts titled, At What Age Do Most People Retire in America? and Much Poorer, But Also Much Richer Too, both by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com. And that's going to do it for this edition of Optimal Finance Daily. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.